Uh, before we get into our two match breakdowns for the evening, uh, Karthik, you and Mason, in partnership with our longtime friends over at the CompassAlliance.org, uh, put together an awesome guide reviewing seven robot in three day teams, focusing on both the design and strategy implementa- implementation that these teams brought. Uh, let's just take a little bit of time to go through the highlights of these teams and talk about overall what teams can learn and implement for their design and strategy for destination deep space. Thanks, PJ. Uh, so the, the robot in three days process, if you go back to 2013, when it all got started with the original group, uh, RI3D 1.0, if you want to call them that, um, Dan Richardson and his crew down in Florida. First couple of weeks, a lot of teams are relying on these as their prototyping process. So they're they're going through and they're trying to learn from them. And we've seen these teams change over time from when there was one to this year. I think there might have been at least 50 of these around the world, maybe more. Yeah, there was a lot. But, and, and the purpose is some of them are just like a group of college kids who are just fooling around and they don't actually care if they're helping the community or not. And that's fine. Like it's just their their challenge. They want to see if they can build a robot in three days. Maybe they release some documentation. Maybe they don't. But then you've got groups out there like um, I'd say like Snow Problems uh, in Minnesota who releases this huge set of documentation breaking down the game, their analysis, justifying their design decisions. And they still build like a really simple robot. But there's so much that can be learned. This year we had... Um, the Capital City Group uh, that was on Fun, and they their robot ended up being like super complex, but uh, again, like it's just like this, this neat sort of evolution. And so it was really cool doing this analysis with the Compass Alliance, just going going through the various RI three Ds, breaking them down mechanism by mechanism to say, hey, like this is what's effective. Hey, this is how this mechanism could evolve in the future. This is where how teams could use it. And so it was uh, cool to see. And I think some of these RI three Ds are really going to set the tone for what we see this year. And as uh, Tyler's showing right now with the uh, Snow Problems robot, they had a really interesting way of tackling the level three climb where they lean forward and then pinch the sides of the hab and then rotate 90 degrees up. And I think something like that is something that a lot of teams may have conceived of, but seeing the Snow Problems team actually do it might give them the, hey, let's actually go for it. And I think that these robots, and we can see the video of it right now, um, these RI three Ds actually can set the tone for the season because a lot of these will become the dominant sort of design ideas because teams are going to you know follow along and they're basically doing the prototyping for like maybe like a third of the teams in FRC who don't have the resources to prototype properly. So that's really neat to me. Um, the one that I really loved watching was um, from my own alma mater, the University of Waterloo, and it not that the robot was spectacular or anything like that, but it was like it was very much a robot that works in three days. But the guys, it's such a great job of breaking down their design decisions uh, in their videos that they put on YouTube. I think there's a lot the teams can learn from all this. So I think it was a pretty good year for RI3D, or maybe because I just avoided the really garbagey ones, <laughs> and that might be a part of it. But I don't know, PJ, what did you get out of the RI3D process this year? Um, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I know um, I've been talking to a few teams throughout the week, and it's throughout the you know last week or so, and it's amazing how useful this can be to your like mid-level team or your low mid-level team that's looking to have that breakout year but has never had the resources like there's a team i uh i consult and help out a little bit with their strategy and stuff down in virginia actually and they're consistently like in the mid-tier of their events and then but seeing the uh i know that you mentioned the snow problem climber that's when they're looking at as like a game changer for them because it's they're like oh we can build this they just never would have thought of it or necessarily had the resources to do it but now they're like oh we can do that and then we'll be able to get that rp and like that's we'll be able to get them from this you know consistent quarterfinal maybe semifinal team to potentially breaking into finals or winning events i think that's just what these more use you know useful ri3d teams that put out the documentation that show their process it can it's just helping raise the that and the MCC that we'll be talking about in a little bit, it's, I think it's raised the competitive bar quite a bit since they started back in 2013. Right. I guess my only concern is, is that I think that some of the RI3Ds have become uh, a little bit too good. And so some people would be like, how is that an issue? But it's an issue because a lot of teams, they see the resources and they see like, oh, well, that robot was built in three days. If they can do that in three days, what can we do in 14 times that amount of time? Except that's not really how it works because these teams, yes, they're resource limited in time, but they're not resource limited in talent like most FRC teams are. They've mm-hmm. got a wide array of um, alumni out there who have been doing FRC for so long and they really understand this. Like, you know, 
if those if that was one FRC team, they would put out an awesome robot every year. So you have yeah. to. I'm worried the teams are going to see that one or the Capital City one and just bite off a bit more that they can chew. And like if you look at the Capital City robot, they're doing a hatch panel ground pickup, which I think is one of the more difficult challenges in the game. And I think a lot of teams are trading that off. But the fact that some teams are going to see that in the RI3D, because a lot of teams use the RI3D, they see it as their floor. They're like, oh, we have to be able to do this because an RI3D did this. And if we don't do it, we're going to be below average or we're going to be below that floor of what we expect at events. But like, I have to tell you this, like this robot, this, you know, we're looking at the screen, the Capital City Group. This is not a normal RI3D. Like elevator, probably the bar, best RI3D I've ever seen. Elevator four bar wrist is doing like almost all the game functions except for level three climb. Like this is this is huge. So I don't. I really hope teams don't see this and say, "Oh, we have to be better than this." Just hitting the level or even coming close to these kind of robots is amazing. So I think what's really important is teams, as always, analyze your own resource level. Figure out how much you think you can do and pick and choose from some of these robots. You don't need to try and do everything. The jack of all trades is the master of none, and you're better off just doing a couple things that are really high level than trying to do a lot of things and being me mediocre at it. You know, that's one of the golden rules uh, of FRC strategic design, so I hope the teams stick to it. Remember, use the RI3D teams to get you where you're going, but don't use them um, to kind of judge your own progress. Do you guys want to talk about the uh, EveryBot at all by chance? I came up in chat. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about the EveryBot when we look at MCC match number two tonight because we're going to be following the EveryBot in a match. And so we'll get to them in detail. So stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> but like, yes, EveryBot is awesome, especially EveryBot 2018 and everything that inspired. Yeah. That's why I think EveryBot is definitely like that. I love the concept of EveryBot, but we'll we'll talk about that later. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.